Creating a setting is a very important part of storytelling. Part 4 of my Clone Revelation series heavily features a battle fought in a town set on a desolate gray planet. As much as I'd like to be able to say that it was all a massive set that I built for those scenes, well, the reality is that I don't have nearly that many buildings to work with. In fact, I only have two. In this video, I will show you how you can construct a fully fleshed out virtual town based on only two different building models. This process relies heavily on the editing aspect, and fair warning, it is slightly tedious and does require a lot of work, but the results are worth it in my opinion. The technique that I'm about to show will ultimately require the use of a video editing program that allows for multiple video overlay channels along with a chroma key and crop function. These are very common features that most decent video editors can do with no problem, but if you have a program that doesn't have at least the first two features, then this technique won't be possible. In a worst case scenario, the pictures could be cropped with a free photo editor like GIMP 2.0, although it'll certainly complicate the editing process a bit. Okay, let's get started. The first step to creating any scene is to visualize it first. Construct a virtual image of how your town is laid out, making note of where your characters are supposed to be positioned. It's a good idea to create an establishing shot to help your scene stay consistent from a layout perspective. So let's get into how to do this. We'll be moving a base plate with our buildings all around the scene to construct our full picture. First, start with the objects closest to the camera. Now two buildings isn't even going to be enough to fill up one base plate as we've set it up. So what we do is pick either the right or left side to position our buildings initially. We also need to set up a blue or green screen in the background. I chose a blue screen for this picture because I feel it contrasts better with the colors of our buildings. For my blue screen, I'm using a sheet of blue poster board that I bought at Walmart for like a dollar. I like the poster board because you can slide the end of it under the base plate ever so slightly to make sure that it's providing adequate background coverage. If you choose to use the poster board, it'll have to be propped up in the back so that it covers your entire background. Now we've reached the point where we take our first picture. From here on out, every time we move our buildings to a new position, we take a picture. By the end of the picture taking process, we'll have pictures of all the buildings as they appear in the final edit. Once we have our picture, the next step is to carefully, without moving the base plate, transition the buildings to the other side. We'll have to come back to this in the editing process, but for now, let's get the rest of our pictures. The next step will be to move our base plate further away from the camera, just enough so that the front of the base plate is positioned exactly where the base plate from the first set of pictures ends. I like to use two other smaller base plates to help me with my orientation. It's worth mentioning here that your camera should be in manual focus mode. You don't want your camera's focus to readjust to your newly positioned buildings. As you move further away, your pictures will be a bit blurry. This is okay and it'll look natural when it's all put together. It's also important to make sure that the blue screen takes up as much of the background as possible, at least fully encompassing the silhouette of your buildings. We'll be cropping these pictures during the editing process, so it doesn't need to take up the entire background. But if there's any part of your buildings without blue screen behind them, the editing process becomes much more tedious. It'll require you to manually trace out the outline of your buildings against whatever background might be in your picture. So, as before, keep your base plate as still as you possibly can, and move your buildings to the other side of the street, if you will. It may be necessary to move the blue screen as well to accommodate the new building positions. It's important to keep the base plate still because we'll be combining the two pictures in post and we'll need them to line up, otherwise the scene won't look right. Now it's time to continue the process until we have as many buildings as we feel that we need. In this case, I'll close off the back section as if there were another street forming a three-way intersection with the one we are on. That way we don't have a row of buildings going on forever, or until we run out of space or patience.
Once we have all of our pictures, it's time to edit. We'll start with the background. The one I'll use today is just this gray backdrop that I used for my town in part 4. The backdrop isn't super important since very little of it will be visible once the scene is complete. Let's start with the first pictures we took. They'll be our foremost video channel. We'll start by overlaying one on top of the other. The next step is to key up the background of the first picture. This will reveal at least part of the picture underneath. Step after that will be to crop the top video channel inward from the side that has no buildings on it. Cropping it to about the midpoint tends to be best in terms of not cutting off shadows. Now, during the filming process, if your base plate remains still, you should see the two pictures overlay nicely into what appears to be a street with buildings on either side. Use the crop function on both layers to remove any unwanted pieces of background, like areas that the blue screen didn't cover. Once this is done, we can move on to the next set of pictures. Performing roughly the same steps, we add in the layer of buildings behind our original. And now we see our set really beginning to take shape. It's worth noting here that you can also start from the bottommost layer and work your way forward. It's really just personal preference. I chose to start from the front of this video so it would be easier to follow along with the steps I was taking, but some may find it easier to work back to front so that they have a clear view of their back layers without them being obstructed by the nearer layers. So now we continue this process until the whole town has been fleshed out. I like this technique because it's very versatile. As long as you are careful when you're moving around your pieces, they should all fit together in the end without having to actually have their position on the screen adjusted. It allows for shots at many different angles and can really help breathe life and scale into a setting. This was a very basic intro to this technique and there are many more advanced strategies that can be used to improve the result even further. Video clips can be easily substituted for the picture clips we used to really bring your town to life. Just an example. A few final notes on this technique. As I mentioned before, it is very important to visualize the actual layout of the town you are trying to create, even if not everything is present in the frame. Since you'll basically be reconstructing your town each time you change camera angles, this added orientation will help you keep your overall scene spatially consistent. I highly recommend creating an establishing shot for both the audience's sake and your own reference. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments, along with any suggestions for tutorials that you might like to see next. I'll leave links to the software I use down in the description. Thank you all for watching, and best of luck on any future video projects.